As I stood there, a delicate lace veil cascading from my honey blonde curls, I was enveloped in the frills and embroidery of a wedding gown that wasn't meant for me. It was supposed to be my sister Eliza's big day, her dream wedding. But fate had other plans. Eliza was in the hospital, struck by a sudden, severe illness just hours before her wedding. Mom, ever the pragmatist, had decided that the show must go on, with me, her 16-year-old son, as the replacement bride. It's just for show, honey, she had said, her hands busy adjusting the train of the dress that drowned my slight frame. We can't waste all the preparations and hurt all those people who've come to celebrate. I remember looking at myself in the mirror, my reflection a surreal blend of boyish bewilderment in a sea of silk and satin. The situation was bizarre, yet the seriousness of my sister's condition made me swallow any protests. Eliza had planned her wedding for over a year, dreaming of every detail from the floral arrangements to the embroidery on her dress. Standing there in her stead, I felt a mix of responsibility and absurdity. Let's go now, and don't be so selfish, mom's words cut through my thoughts, mistaking my hesitation for reluctance. She didn't understand that my heart was heavy with worry for Eliza, not with resistance to this strange role I was playing. As we approached the ceremony, all eyes turned to us, or more accurately, to me. I could hear the murmurs, feel the stares, the confusion in the guests' eyes as they saw a young boy dressed as a bride. But as I walked down the aisle, I held my head high, clutching the bouquet that Eliza had chosen, each step a silent prayer for her recovery. The ceremony was a blur, each part of it a reminder of the sister I so desperately hoped would be okay. The priest, in on the plan, carefully navigated the unusual circumstances with a tact that only those seasoned by all walks of life could manage. At the reception, I gave the speech that Eliza had written. With each word, I felt closer to her, hoping she could feel the love and celebration in spirit even if she couldn't be there in person. It was surreal, yet touching to see how many people sent their best wishes for her health. As the night drew to a close, with the stars twinkling above like the sequins on my borrowed gown, I felt a mixture of relief and sadness. The event had been a success, but the absence of Eliza was deeply felt by everyone, most of all by me. Later, when we visited Eliza at the hospital with videos and photos, her laughter upon seeing me in her wedding dress was the best reward. You did me proud, she whispered, her voice weak but filled with love. As Eliza watched the videos, her laughter turned into a soft, grateful smile. You did me proud, she whispered, her voice weak but filled with love. But the ordeal wasn't over. Eliza's condition didn't improve quickly enough for her to be released from the hospital. The doctors recommended a longer stay for observation, and as the days passed, it became clear she wouldn't be ready to return in time for the postponed legal wedding ceremony either. Once again, mom and dad huddled together in whispered discussions. The legalities needed to be addressed, the marriage had to be finalized. After what felt like an eternity of deliberation, they turned to me, their expressions a mix of apology and determination. Sweetie, mom began, her tone gentle but firm, we need you to step in again. Just for the legal part. It's important for Eliza and Mark's future. The weight of their request pressed heavily on my shoulders. I glanced at Eliza, her pale face lined with worry and hope. She squeezed my hand weakly, her eyes pleading. Please, little brother, she whispered. Just until I get better. We can sort it out later. The day of the legal ceremony arrived faster than I anticipated. Once again, I found myself in the delicate wedding dress, the lace veil draping over my honey blonde curls. This time, the atmosphere was more solemn, more official. The reality of what I was about to do sank in deeper with each passing minute. Mark, Eliza's fiancé, stood waiting at the altar, his expression a mix of gratitude and unease. He was kind and understanding, doing his best to make me feel comfortable in this absurd situation. As the ceremony began, the familiar words washed over me, their meaning resonating more profoundly this time. When the priest asked, Do you, Eliza, take Mark to be your lawfully wedded husband? I hesitated for a heartbeat before softly saying, I do. The rings were exchanged, and the weight of the situation pressed down even harder. When the priest finally said, You may kiss the bride, my heart pounded in my chest. Mark leaned in gently, his lips brushing mine in a soft, respectful kiss. In that fleeting moment, a strange sensation washed over me, a blend of confusion and surreal acceptance. 
As we signed the legal documents, my hands trembled slightly. It felt bizarrely real, as if I were truly stepping into Eliza's shoes, becoming Mark's wife, even if just on paper. The responsibility and the absurdity of it all mingled in my mind, creating a whirlwind of emotions. After the ceremony, we visited Eliza again, this time with the official papers in hand. She laughed weakly, her eyes twinkling with a mix of amusement and gratitude. You've saved the day, twice now, she said, squeezing my hand. I owe you, big time. After our official wedding, the shift in my life was both profound and beautiful. Mark and I settled into our new home, and the dynamic of our relationship blossomed into something even more loving and authentic. Dressing femininely became a daily joy, as I explored different styles and embraced my true self. Mark always appreciated the effort I put into my appearance, and his compliments made me feel cherished and adored. He treated me with the utmost respect and love, always making sure I felt comfortable and valued. Our days were filled with the usual routines of married life, sharing meals, making decisions together, and enjoying each other's company. But there was also a deeper connection between us, a bond that was strengthened by our mutual understanding and acceptance of one another. Mark's support was unwavering. He encouraged me to pursue my interests and passions, and we often spent time together exploring new hobbies. Whether we were cooking together in the kitchen, taking long walks, or simply relaxing at home, there was a sense of peace and happiness that permeated our lives. Being treated as Mark's real wife meant more than just fulfilling a role, it was about being seen and loved for who I truly was. His kindness, patience, and love made every day special, and I felt incredibly lucky to have found someone who accepted me so completely. Our relationship thrived on communication and mutual respect. We faced challenges together, celebrated our successes, and supported each other through difficult times. The love we shared was the foundation of our lives, and it only grew stronger with each passing day. In every sense, Mark and I were partners in life, building a future together based on love, trust, and mutual respect. Our journey was unique, and it brought us closer than I ever could have imagined. Being his loving wife was the most fulfilling experience of my life, and I wouldn't have had it any other way. The news of my sister's passing hit me like a tidal wave. She had always been a guiding light in my life, and losing her was a devastating blow. In her will, she left me a letter expressing her deep love and the wish for me to continue living authentically, embracing the persona I had adopted with Mark. She believed in my strength and capacity to transition fully into the woman and loving wife I had become. Her words were both a comfort and a call to action. With Mark by my side, I began the next phase of my journey, transitioning into a woman physically, emotionally, and legally. The support from Mark was unwavering, as he stood by me through every doctor's appointment, therapy session, and milestone. His love and encouragement made the process less daunting and more affirming. Transitioning was a profound experience, filled with both challenges and triumphs. The hormonal treatments, surgeries, and the gradual physical changes were markers of my transformation, but the emotional journey was equally significant. Each step brought me closer to my true self, and I felt a growing sense of completeness and happiness. Mark's role in this was invaluable. He was patient, understanding, and loving, always reminding me of my worth and beauty. We continued to build our life together, with Mark ensuring that I felt cherished and respected as his wife. Our bond grew stronger, rooted in the deep love and mutual respect we had for each other. During this time, I found solace in honoring my sister's memory. Her belief in me and her wish for my happiness were powerful motivators. I kept her close in my heart, knowing she would be proud of the woman I was becoming. Her legacy lived on through me, in every step I took towards living my truth. As I transitioned, our home became a sanctuary of love and acceptance. Mark and I navigated life's ups and downs together, finding joy in the mundane and the extraordinary. Whether we were tackling everyday tasks or celebrating significant milestones, there was a sense of partnership and unity that defined our relationship. Eventually, I legally changed my name and gender, a symbolic and legal affirmation of my identity. It was a moment of immense pride and relief, knowing that I was finally recognized as the person I had always been. Mark was there, holding my hand and celebrating this victory with me. In every way, being Mark's loving wife was the most fulfilling and empowering role of my life. 
The journey was not without its difficulties, but with Mark's love and my sister's memory guiding me, I embraced my true self fully. Together, we continued to build a life of love, respect, and authenticity, knowing that we had each other through all the seasons of life.